Today we're going to help you diagnose and troubleshoot your sequential twin turbo system in your Mazda RX-7 FD. So we're going to go ahead and jump in right away. So first off, if you believe your twin turbo system is not working, you need to verify if your primary or secondary turbos are working. And the way that you do that is by verifying with a boost gauge. Now, if you have a boost gauge installed, you're going to want to see if you have a 10-8-10. What that means is that the primary turbo is going to do about 10 PSI. There's going to be a small dip at 8 PSI, and then it's going to go back at 10 PSI whenever the secondary turbo kicks in. Now, what I did since I didn't have a boost gauge is I needed to verify my complaint. And what I mean by that is I needed to find out what was going on with my car. I could hear the turbo spooling and then around 4,500 RPMs, I could hear it not spooling anymore and then the car felt sluggish. So I knew that I probably had a secondary turbo problem, but I needed to verify it. And what I did is I ordered a boost gauge. I got a mechanical one. So since we have our upper intake manifold off, I want to show you something really quickly. This is actually where they tee off the OEM boost gauge uh, on later models, but on my 94, that's not there. So what I did is I went ahead and I teed into it uh, just using a T connector from what I got from the boost gauge. And then what I did is I routed it underneath the hood and then I went through my side mirror and my wife held it while I drove. Now this is completely a janky move, but again, for me, I wanted to verify if I had secondary boost and it told me right away I did it. So of course, I'm gonna be hooking this up correctly. I'm gonna be routing the boost gauge through the proper way, through the fender, and I have a pillar and everything, a gauge pod that I'm gonna put it into. But in order for me to verify it right away, and that was one of those things I needed to do for troubleshooting, that's how I did it. And you could do it as well. The first thing you wanna do is just look real quickly around your engine bay and see if one of your vacuum hoses is loose, cracked, or it's just really, really hard. You're gonna to have to touch it to be able to tell if it's hard. But with the RX-7, I could tell you right away that they go bad. As a matter of fact, I just ordered a whole silicon hose kit to address that because I have a lot of hoses that are so hard that at the end, they've molded themselves at a larger diameter, which can lead to a leak. So your vacuum hoses are gonna be a big thing. If they're really, really hard, most likely you're gonna to have to start looking to address them with a silicone kit. But if you don't see any of them loose, the next thing you want to look at is you want to look at some check valves. So you have different check valves. You have a green and black. You have a white and green. One of them had an oil filter. Another one did it. But essentially, a check valve works the way that it sounds. It only allows air one way and it doesn't allow air the other. Now, these go bad. They're expensive. You could still buy them new, but they offer some Viaton replacements, some aftermarket ones that people are using. But sometimes your check valves will go bad and that could cause some issues. Now, how do you know if they go bad? We'll take it out and see if it allows air to go in one way or another and sometimes when you do take them out they've come apart and you can know they're bad when I first got my car I had an aftermarket one it came apart and I thought that that was my issue but it wasn't but some of the times you're gonna have tanks you have a vacuum tank and a pressure tank and this pressure tank right here is part of the secondary turbo system and sometimes it could crack sometimes it cannot hold air but one of the easy checks you could do is after you run your car after you drive it if you pull off a hose and you're psh, then it's holding pressure in my opinion. But these are some of the things you can check really quickly without having to remove anything. Make sure all your connectors are good. Make sure your hoses are good. But by then we're going to want to move on to the next step of trying to diagnose your issue. So by now, some of these components should be familiar to you and you should know what they are. Now I'll go over a really brief overview, but you have a blow off valve and then you have a charge relief valve and they're labeled. So you have a brown one and a black one and the CRV, of course, charge relief valve. And then you have the ABV, which is the air blow off valve. And they look the same. And as a matter of fact, they're in kind of the same area. And what you're gonna to wanna to do to check with these is the hoses. So this hose that connect to my blow off valve, right? It was so hard, I couldn't remove it. It was the first 
hose in about 20 years as being a master tech and working on cars that I've never been able to remove a hose. I had to use a blow dryer, I had to cut it off. It was really, really hard. And when somebody said online that if you could turn it, it's loose, it was loose, it was turning and it, and it was weird. It wasn't coming off, but it would turn. So I got this off and I ordered a brand new one, right? But when I started taking stuff apart today and I took the charge relief valve off, I found this, right? Well, it wasn't like this, but when I moved it, it shattered. This was originally soft, supple, subtle, whatever you call it, rubber, and it is hard as plastic and it shattered. And believe it or not, this could have caused my secondary boost issues. I haven't verified that quite yet, but this is bad. So I ordered this as well, and I was thinking, well, this is real close to the turbos. If this went bad, then if, is this okay? Well, I went ahead and I checked it, and you could check it by using you know, a vacuum tester. And I had the Mighty Vac right here, and I connected, um, you know, a hose to it and I simply just put a little bit of vacuum and you could hear it open and you could hear it close. You could do the same thing with the blow off valve. Same thing, add some vacuum, you hear it and then you just let it go and it's good. So you're going to have to get real familiar with this vacuum diagram. As a matter of fact, I found this one that's colored on rx7club.com and it makes it a little bit easier to look at it versus the black and white one. But at first it looks really intimidating and it took me weeks to finally get really comfortable with it. But after a while you start looking at things and it makes sense because the most important thing is understanding how the system works. Now I'm making videos how to troubleshoot and trying to you know make them a little bit short and get to the point but there is a very good video. It's about 45 minutes long. This is the name of the video and this is how it looks, the thumbnail. But this individual does a great job breaking down every component and letting you know how this system works. So if you're still having issues, I recommend that you go watch that whole video so you can understand certain components, understand the theory of operation, and have that knowledge so whenever you're troubleshooting, you just know more about the system and you feel comfortable navigating through it and that will help you find your problem. Now in our next video we're going to be talking about these solenoids right and the ones I just took off and I could tell you right away that the vacuum hoses is a big deal. These are so rock solid, rock solid on these that it's not even funny. But that's what we're going to be talking about in our next video. And then after that, we're going to go on and we're going to teach you how to find your issue based on the research and knowledge that I've learned. Well, guys, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. You take care. Stay safe. Hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.